Resigning Jayon Brown to a one-year $5.3 million contract was a pleasant surprise for Titans fans after a week of watching key contributors get released or signed to other teams. When he signs a long-term deal next offseason, I expect Jayon Brown to get something close to what Matt Milano got recently, which was four years, $42 million. I've talked about the Titans linebacker situation pretty extensively in an article that I'll link below, so I won't rehash that whole conversation, but Tennessee's definitely going to have some difficult decisions to make at the linebacker position going forward. Jayon Brown got off to a slow start in 2020, but he rebounded nicely with great games against Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, and Chicago. He consistently grades as one of the better cover linebackers in the NFL, but he's a little inconsistent in run defense despite being a reliable tackler. He lines up most often as the weak side linebacker, but he's played more Mike and Sam the past two seasons with Wesley Woodyard out of the picture. The modern brand of West Coast offense thrives off of attacking the middle of the field, and more specifically linebackers, with play action, RPOs, high-low concepts out of 12 personnel, misdirection, and zone blocking concepts that send linemen to the second level, linebackers have more to manage than any other position on the defense. So it's no surprise that there's only a handful of linebackers who actually have much success in pass coverage. To counter the pass-heavy nature of today's offenses, teams have started placing a premium on smaller linebackers who offer more versatility in coverage. Players like Deion Jones, Roquan Smith, and Eric Kendricks, all lighter than 230 pounds, would struggle to find a role in the NFL a couple decades ago, but they're some of the best linebackers in the league today. At 6'1", 226, Jayon Brown fits the mold of the modern linebacker. On this rep against Jacksonville, Jayon demonstrates close to perfect coverage technique. When Chris Thompson stems his route to the outside, Jayon establishes inside leverage. He does this while remaining square with the receiver so he doesn't get beat on the route break, and he establishes a low and wide base so that he can accelerate in any direction. Rule one for linebackers and man coverage is don't get beat over the middle. So Brown plants his outside foot in the ground, maximizing his ability to explode inside. Ideally, a linebacker would also jam the receiver's chest to disrupt his route, but Brown had to prioritize getting to the correct spot and squaring up. When Thompson breaks on his route, Brown makes just enough contact with his inside hand to maintain control, and he uses his outside hand to shield the receiver from the ball. His agility and body control allow him to recover when he's forced into difficult situations as well. This Texas route that David Johnson runs on this play is designed to take advantage of stiff linebackers who can't change directions, but once Johnson breaks inside, Jayon has the athleticism and route recognition to stop on a dime and bounce inside with him. Since he was lined up on the line of scrimmage with inside leverage, he had more ground to make up and less room for error. And sometimes you've just got to know where the refs are on the field and grab a receiver's jersey if you can get away with it. When linebackers position themselves with running backs before the route break, it's critical that they keep their center of gravity low and their feet square. As I said before, a linebacker's first concern 99% of the time should be inside routes, but proper body positioning allows them to protect the flats as well. On this play, Naheem Hines is able to exploit the vulnerable position that Jayon puts himself in and score a touchdown. Comparing this play to the first play I discussed shows the importance of establishing proper position when a receiver stems his route outside. For the most part, Jayon's extremely reliable in man coverage, but when he gets beat, it's usually a result of sloppy technique. And even when his technique isn't perfect or he slips and allows separation, he's athletic enough to recover pretty often. In zone coverage, Brown does a great job of covering receivers, not grass. One of my biggest pet peeves with linebackers, and it's something Rashawn Evans is really bad about, is when they drop into their zone and just sort of occupy space. But when Jayon's in zone coverage, he's extremely proactive when it comes to finding actual players to cover. On this third and 10 play versus Pittsburgh, Tennessee's in quarters coverage, which depending on how you look at it is a two or four high coverage with three underneath defenders. But Tennessee's running a fire zone blitz from the slot, so they only have two underneath defenders here. This is a pretty standard defensive call on third and long situations like these, not only because you're getting a five man rush instead of four, but quarterbacks can sometimes get tricked into throwing to their hot read without seeing who's replacing the player that's blitzing. In quarters coverage versus a 2x2 two two formation, the four deep defenders are reading the receivers directly in front of them. If the receiver releases vertically, it essentially turns into man coverage. 
the apex defender, which in this case is Jayon Brown, is in wall coverage on the number two receiver. And when I say number two receiver, I'm referring to the second receiver counting outside to inside. In wall coverage, the apex defender plays man-to-man -man on number two with a couple of exceptions. If the receiver releases vertically, the defender will wall him from the inside and reroute him at the top of his route. Or if the number one receiver releases inside, the wall defender will pick him up as soon as he crosses the field. Walling the number two receiver is important because even though the safety has him covered if he releases vertically, he can't be too aggressive or he could get beat over the top. So this lets the defense contest the receiver's route at the intermediate level without being left vulnerable down the field. When the ball snap, Jayon immediately turns to the field side and reads the receiver's routes. Since both release vertically, he walls the number two and breaks up the pass. Later in the same game, Tennessee's again playing quarters coverage, this time with a four-man rush. The number one receiver releases inside, and in most defenses, the outside corner will yell a signal to alert the linebacker of this. Brown jams the number two, disrupting his route and closing off the seam, and then immediately breaks for James Conner and makes the tackle. On another play against Pittsburgh, Tennessee's in cover three, and Jayon is the weak hook defender. Here Jayon's in zone coverage, unless the strong side number two or three receiver releases vertically inside, in which case he's in man coverage on that receiver. So he abandons his zone and covers Juju down the field and is able to stay with him when he cuts his route off. Jayon is consistently in the right spot in zone coverage to the point that if I'm struggling to figure out what defense Tennessee's in, I start by looking at where Jayon is because he's usually where he's supposed to be. His speed and quickness obviously help him in pass coverage, but it's the mental side of his game that sets him apart. You don't just show up to the NFL with the ability to diagnose route concepts with the consistency that he does. With that being said, there is one zone coverage issue with Jayon that stood out to me. On this play versus Indianapolis, the Titans are in a variation of cover two against an empty formation. When Tennessee plays cover two, they like to have Rashawn Evans drop really deep to the point that they're essentially playing Tampa two, but here they also drop Daquan Jones into underneath coverage and only rush three. Jayon's role here is the same as in the previous clips we've discussed. He's in man coverage on the number two receiver unless he releases to the flat or the number one receiver releases inside. But instead of walling and rerouting, Jayon stares down the quarterback and drifts away from his assignment. I thought this play was kind of strange when I watched it, so I went back and looked at every Titan snap versus empty in 2020, and sure enough, the first play I came across, I saw the exact same thing. Empty personnel, cover two with Evans taking a super deep drop, a defensive lineman dropping into coverage, and Jayon hovering about four yards away from the number two receiver on a curl route. Every team has their own pattern matching rules, so it's definitely possible that the coaches told them to cover this way in this certain variation of cover two. And this isn't even a major criticism or anything, it's just something sort of weird I noticed. Jayon isn't a liability in run defense, but his lack of size and physicality puts a cap on how effective he can be defending the run. His only real method of avoiding blocks is running around them, which is okay to an extent, but trying to run around blocks will eventually get you beat. But when he's forced to meet a pulling guard or even a tight end head on, he almost always gets taken out of the play. Like I discussed in my David Long breakdown, this is the line that you have to balance when choosing your linebackers. Bigger linebackers are gonna have a tougher time in coverage, but smaller linebackers will have a hard time getting off of blocks. Even though Rashawn Evans hasn't worked out in Tennessee, I think the Titans took the correct approach when assembling their linebacker group have a bigger linebacker to play Sam and Mike and be physical at the line of scrimmage, and then have a smaller linebacker on the weak side who's better in coverage. That's why you never really notice Jayon Brown as a weak run defender, because he isn't really asked to take on blocks all that often. Jayon's at his best when all he has to do is sift through traffic and be a reliable tackler. The athleticism, instincts, and awareness that make him a good cover player also make him someone that can reliably break down ball carriers and maintain good gap discipline. What wins in today's NFL is defending the pass, so if having a C-plus run defender is the cost of having an A-minus cover linebacker, I'll take that deal any day. If you like this video, consider subscribing because I'll be doing in-depth film breakdowns of every Titans draft pick, along with some of my other favorite prospects once we find out what team they're on. I'm also aiming to do film rooms on a good portion of Titans players before the season starts, and I'm always open to suggestions if you want to leave them in the comments. 